All right, welcome in, fans, to Canandaigua Braves Boys Lacrosse here on the station for Braves Nation, the home for high school sports chosen spot radio. We are underway. I'm Craig the Spaz, man, Simmons, your round mound of sound coming at you live. Here comes the dominator, Dom Camella, down the right side, gets it checked out of his stick. Here's a laser from the left-hand side, and our first goal for Canandaigua Braves Boys Lacrosse in 714 days. That's right, May 29. 29- 9th of 2019 was the last time that was knocked down by number 10, Cody Ike, the big boy, and that's going to be his second. That was a gingerific shot with the right hand from the left side alley, and just like that, Canandaigua is going to take the one to nothing lead at 11.32 left to play. So just, uh, what do we have? What's uh, 50, my 18, 28, 18 seconds in. And here is the face-off, and on the violation, it's going to go to Canandaigua. So they call a violation against Liam McGuire, one and one for two. And when I say one and one for two, I mean one goal, one assist for two points. So here comes Canandaigua. Like I said, uh, where is my... uh Where's my lines? My my uh, paper with the lines on it. There we go. All right. So, uh, Canandaigua, eleven thirty-two, and that was uh, Ike. So here's Canandaigua with the red lids. Something different for Canandaigua. Again, sorry about the late start. It's uh. Little if if I told you why I got a late start, you would tell me it's TMI. So, uh, I'm just not gonna tell you. 10.50 left to play. Patched into the Canandaigua School District YouTube page as well. Canandaigua, white tops, white bottoms, red lids. Chromy red lids with gray numbers and cherry outline. I wish that was the opposite. So, yes, that's a uh, that's a shot at whoever designed <laughs> those, those uh, gray numbers on a white jersey. But here is Brighton looking for their opportunity to tie things up. They bring it at X. They bring it around here to the right alley. And shot put down overhand by TJ Carl looking for number four on the season. But it's going to sail high over the net. But as Brighton was closest to the ball when it went out of bounds after the shot they do retain possession in goal for Canada with Jack Fayola two, uh, two saves, two goals against in 24 minutes against Geneva Canada will want to know beating Geneva 13-3 on Sunday Brighton losing a heartbreaker 13-12 against Hilton so they're 0-1 and here comes Canandaigua ball at the 30 yard line that's one thing I love about doing a game on a multi-use field I can tell you where they are as far as yardage go so again I'm Craig the Spazman Simmons your round mound of sound coming at you live here is Sam Bennett Sammy B and a nice job on the save there by Brighton good job Uh, number 30 Thomas D'Angelo coming into today in 48 minutes, 8 saves, 12 goals against. So he played the whole game against Hilton. I want to give my boy Greg Herbst a shout out just here to watch his son Nick Herbst who plays defense and here's a turnover at midfield and here comes Canada. we run it down the left hand side. It's Dom Camella our player of the year in football. Sammy B lets a sidewinder go, a side armor from the right hand and it goes wide left but backing it up is Cam Tallman. Cam Tallman back there to back it up. I don't need to look at his number and look and see who he is. You can just tell he's a stocky dude. Stocky dude, but he's all muscle. All muscle. His muscles have muscles. Here's a ball up top with Jackson Grant wearing the number three. That is a big, big, big shoes to fill there. And Grant comes down and uh, not sure where it was. I think it got knocked down. I think a defender knocked it down before it got through to D'Angelo. And now the ball with the long pole of James Biacci, the senior. And he's going to go over to D'Angelo, the goalie coming right, walking it right up the middle of the field. He's going to feed it up to near midfield, up to McGuire, the junior. McGuire being guarded very closely by Eric Platten, who's going to go to Yale. 
The dude is going to the Ivy League. Yale, 8.23 left to play. Canada will leading one to nothing, and they are going to get the ball over here on the near side with Sammy B, Sam Bennett. He's got two apples on the season, and apples is just hockey speak for an assist. So I know it's not hockey, but there are a lot of parallels between the two games. Here comes Cody Ike. Man, that's a big dude. He is a big dude. He lets the right-hand runner go. It goes wide left, but backed up nicely there by Canada. So they do retain possession with the 1-0 lead with 7.50 left to play. As I said, 4 12-minute quarters. And uh, one more time, I alluded to uh, Greg Herbst. He was my color commentator for the last four years in a game in Eastridge. I, I uh, volunteered him. Look at Ike. He brings it down in a great save by D'Angelo with the stick. Man, when you see that dude coming, you got to be shaking in your boots. No question about it. Cody Ike, big dude, multi, multi-sport athlete here. Plays football, basketball, and Lacrosse, as you can tell, one of the attack here for Canada. Well, now Brighton going to try and, as I said, tie things up, get rid of that bagel on the board. Head coach for Canada, with Devin York, head coach for Brighton, Donald Benedict, Kyle Stanley, Colin Carson, John Harriman, Rich Wellington, the assistant coaches here for Canada. Well, Kyle Stanley, national champion at Mercyhurst. Can't remember what year. Do you remember what year that was, Greg? What was that? 2011, I, I, it sounds right. National champion down there. Got the, the Colonel, Colin Carson. 650 left to play here in the first. Brighton, as I said, trying to get a good look at... Uh, at, at Jack Fayola here. And here's a shot. And Fayola with a great save. Great save and a quick clear. Quick pass out here. Outlet to Jackson Grant. He's going to take off on the left-hand side and angle over towards the middle. He's going to set up right along the numbers at the 30. Beautiful multi-use facility here at Braves Field. When you talk about keeping up with the Joneses, the Braves have become, Canada Academy has become the Joneses. Everybody talks about this facility here at Braves Field. Ball on the left-hand side with one Elliot Morgan. A lot of these guys, a predominance of players on the field and on the, uh, on the sidelines uh, coming off of right from winning their second straight Section 5 Class A football title to playing lacrosse. As I said, they beat Geneva 13-3 to over there. Here comes Sam B. He can't get the angle. Draws the, uh, draws the slide there. Good slide by number 44, Thomas Welker, the freshman. Here's a shot from the right-hand side, goes wide left. And again, these, uh, <laughs> I can't wait till we get under the lights to try and see these jerseys. Man, that is, uh, it, it's funny because I'm always talking about, you know, visiting teams. But now it's, uh, it's my Braves that I can't tell the jerseys, but we're going to do our best. Anyway, pass over right into the middle is intercepted there by Kel Oberst, the junior. And Brighton, let's see if they can transition. Oh, that's dangerous. That's dangerous anytime you go from about the 30 down at about 20 yards away and you give it to your goalie and he is standing in the goal crease. And uh, oh, why am I off air? There we go. All right, there we go. Now we're on air. Now I'm live. All right, welcome in. Welcome in to everybody on ChosenSpotRadio.com. We, uh, we're live. And uh, man, off to an uh, <laughs> off to a rough start here. But Cannon Day will leading one to nothing, make it two to nothing. Cam Tallman on the feed from Sammy B is going to make it two to nothing with 4:57 left to play. Cam Tallman, the twin sister of Cannon Day with girls goalie Quinn Tallman, who put a pretty good whooping on the uh, Honeyoy Falls Lima Cougars last night to start their season 1-0. and oh. So, uh, Canandaigua, as I said, Tallman from F uh, Bennett, Sammy B, is good at 457, 11, 32, 1 to nothing. And that one comes at 457 to make it two to nothing, Canandaigua. And here is the faceoff. Canandaigua trying to get it over here on the near side. And nice job by Brighton to seal out, uh, to try to seal out uh, Luke McCroby. And they are going to award the faceoff to Brighton. So Brighton now trailing two to nothing. Got the bagel on the board with 430 left to play. Brighton in blue tops, blue lids, white numbers, white shorts, 
shooting on the southern goal, defending the northern goal. Here they come. Here is, uh, I think that, I'm not sure if that was a shot, but it was a left-hander by Sam Tarango. He's at 80% on faceoffs coming into today for the Bruins. If I call them the Barons, I apologize. I've been calling them the Barons for 10 years, and now they switched up to the Bruins. And they get it ahead here, does Canandaigua on the clear. So they do clear ahead to Jackson Grant. The junior has two goals on the season thus far. And they get it over to Cody Ike. He's going to pick it up right at the 40. And he's an imposing figure at 6'3". I don't know, I don't know what, uh, how many bills he's tipping the scales at, but he can move. He can move. So he switches left hand over here. He draws the attention of Thomas Passaway. That's what I'll go with. Ike draws the double. Here's the slide. Man, he is working hard. Now he's going to go over to the right wing. Good luck on picking, <laughs> picking up the jersey on who that is. Here it is over here on the near side. Boy, those are going to be hard to read, my brother. Here with Grant. Grant le lets the left-hander go. Telegraph that. All right, you got to change levels, man. You got to change levels. You got to go high to low, low to high. If you're going to come with the sidewinder, you know, you, you, you're kind of telegraphing, sending an email where you're going to shoot that. And a nice save there by D'Angelo. But the clearing pass is going to go out of bounds, and it'll go to Canadagua. So Canadagua with 255 left to play with the 2 to nothing lead. Got to give a shout out to all of our sponsors here for the uh, Canada with Boys Lacrosse Boosters. We'll give them a shout out during the course. I'll start with ADS Masonry. ADS Masonry. Look at Cody Ike lets it go, but again, telegraphed and not too difficult of a save there for D'Angelo. Did have a big rebound, but it came down to one of the bright and long poles. Now they try to get it across and they can't clear, so it's going to be picked up by the long pole of Eric Platten. Platten. Oh, man, I thought he was going to get a shot off. I thought he was going to get a right-hander, but the long pull, unable to let that go. So I want to give a big shout-out to Clancy Rood. Graduated a couple years ago here at Canandaigua, uh, former player of the year for us at Chosen Spa Radio. She is the America East Conference Co-Defensive Player of the Year and is uh, – named to the all-conference team she's on the albany uh, great danes and she had a great great season out there for the great danes in albany so congratulations clancy i've always said if my life depended upon one ground ball i want her going after it to get it up here to sean oh is it Al albany 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 135 it was nice to, nice to go down on the field and get a hug from Coach York, but really didn't have enough time to talk about, you know, the things that we usually talk about, like name pronunciations. Here is Alvaney. He draws a lot of attention at the 20. Now he ends up on the turf, and there is the flag. So we're going to get a push, and Canandaigua should go a man up here for, what, 30 seconds? We'll see. 117. Action is stopped. Again, thank you to Brian Rood Orthodontics. Brian Rood Orthodontics, as well as For Recycling. F O R E, For Recycling. So, Canandaigua about to go a man up. Emo opportunity here for the Braves with 117 left to play in the first. And that is going to go, it is a 32nd, and it is going to go against Ben Vitelli. The push from behind right there in the middle. This is not an offense that Brighton wants to give the Emo to. And Emo, in case you're, you know, new to lacrosse or don't really know, is extra man opportunity. It's a man up. It's a power play in essence. And here is a right-hander. Wow. Wow, D'Angelo with a great save. Great save by D'Angelo on that shot by, I believe that was, uh, wasn't that Blazak? Wasn't that the Spinnaker? I believe that was Spin Blaze, uh, Blazak, I should say. And let's see if they can clear. And they can't. Brighton having a very, very difficult time on clearing. And Fayola is going to come up, and he is going to, uh, pick up the ball and come up, and here is a nice pass out in front and a great finish. So Tallman is going to feed the middle, and I can't tell, cannot tell who uh, who got that just yet. We'll wait and see. But Tallman with the apple 
And I believe, yep, that is number nine, and that is Matt Bellis, his second of the year for the junior. So Tallman to Bellis with 32 seconds left to go is good to give Canandaigua the three-nothing lead. So Canandaigua with three in a row. Now we all know Matt is the younger brother of Mark, who plays for St. Bonaventure, who is uh, dealing with their conference tournament. Point thirty two to make it three to nothing. Now I've been asked, hey, what's gonna happen? Listen, the last time these guys played was in April of two thousand and nineteen, as Canada is gonna get the face off. Almost throw it away, but a nice job climbing the ladder over there to get possession. And ball is on the carpet before being picked up by Tom. And these guys played in April of 2019. And Brighton put a pretty good whipping on him in a game you heard here on Chosen Spot Radio. Tallman with a left-hander goes wide right. Backed up nicely, though, by Brighton. So good job by D'Angelo. Love a, a, a goalie who's not afraid to come out of the crease. No question about that. But... Uh, Brighton put a pretty good whooping on these guys, 15 to 5. So that brings the first quarter to an end. Man, that was a very quick quarter. That was a very, very fast quarter, and Canandaigua is going to walk into the second quarter with a 3 to nothing lead. So here we go. We switch ends. Canandaigua now defending the northern goal, and Brighton now defending the southern goal. Fresh 12. Here we go. We're back at it. So grinding it out here, and uh, it's going to be picked up by Brighton. So Brighton is going to win that faceoff. It is going to be won by Sam Tarango. Again, 80% on the faceoff. He's not a Fogo, though. He's not a TD Erland. He isn't a faceoff get off. He's a faceoff stay on, and he goes into, uh, you know, we need you to score mode. TD Erland out of Victor, the Victor product, in my opinion, in my opinion, the best faceoff guy to have ever played the game. That's just my opinion. You can, you know, fight. You can disagree. You can whatever you want. That's just where I'm at. And I think him not winning the Tewarton last year is easily COVID's most egregious, uh, you know, most egregious robbery of all of the things that we had to sacrifice and give up. I think, uh, Greg, would you agree with that? Yeah. I think so. I th- I, I, he was a shoe-in, shoe-in for the Tewarton Award, which is basically the best college player in lacrosse, uh, D1. And uh, he definitely would have won that. Oh, nice check. Nice takeaway there by Nemo, Jackson Neiman. And I think they're going to get him for a slash. They're going to get somebody for something. I don't know if, nope, Nemo's staying out there. So, But it stops the clock at 1049. But he was, uh, he, him and uh, Jamie Trimboli are back together for the life of me. What is it? Uh, Redwoods, yeah, in the uh, PLL. So they're going to be back together. They played together for a season or a couple seasons there at Victor. And uh, speaking of which, Jim Andre no longer the coach at Victor. He stepped down so he could spend a little more time doing the dad thing, which is which is just fine. So Canandaigua, uh, a man down here for a minute. A full minute, and that is going to go against P.J. Rude. So we were talking about his uh, his older sister, Clancy. Great pedigree in the Rude family, though, man. I'll tell you, athletically speaking. But Clancy, she is uh, just an animal as far as draw controls and ground balls go for the uh, the Great Dane. So P.J. Rude out, 30 seconds left in the emo for the Brighton Bruins. And here is a right hand laser, the bouncer, and Fayola with a great save on that shot by Owen Stanit. Stanit trying to get his fourth of the season. He's got three and three for six. And here on the fast break is going to be Elliot Morgan on the right alley. He's going to dump it down here on the right hand side to uh, <laughs> to Matt Bellet. Is that no? Is that an eight or a nine, bro? That's Matt Bellis right here on the on the right alley, right? Those eight and nines look the same. Here is uh, Jackson Grant, the junior. 940 left to play in the first half. Spin Blazek waiting for it over there right at midfield, right in the middle of the field. So they dump it over to the far side. Now with these jerseys being so difficult to read, I know I'm going to have to break out the binoculars. I got them in hand. So 
Jackson Grant with it right between the hash marks. Comes over here to the dominator. Dom Camella, right hand, goes down. Right hand runner, opposite 90 is good for the dominator. So Dom Camella is on the board with his third of the season. Dom Camella, uh, as I alluded to earlier, our chosen spot radio section five football player of the year and that isn't just for Canandaigua that is for the entirety of section five I think the dude was uh, easily the best running back in the game a lot of people talk about seven McGee and all kinds of other stuff we didn't hear squat from seven McGee in that title game didn't hear squat from him and that people are going to say oh yeah but he was injured no no excuses there are no excuses man no moral victories when you're talking championships you don't make excuses you go next man up here is the face-off win for brighton so they win another one but they trail four to nothing so that tells me either the candidate with defense is stepping up and you know kind of shutting down the brighton offense or Jack Fayol is having a great game. And I think it's a little bit of both. And here we go with the turnover. Here we go with the turnover, and it's brought down by Nemo, another one of the football players here for Canandaigua. 8.35 left to play, and the Braves up 4 to nothing. So, again, thanks for joining us here on Chosen Spot Radio. And uh, have we had anybody check to make sure the audio is good for us, Greg? Not, no. Well, hopefully the audio is coming through on the – uh, the video feed, the Canandaigua School District YouTube feed. Camella feeds it over to the left-hand side. All right, again, very, very difficult. All right, here is Jackson Grant. Right-hand runner comes down, feeds it over behind, over to Bellis. Bellis comes up to the top. All right, that's Spin Blazek over there. Here is Dom Camella. Does the rocker step right-hand runner. Goes wide right. And it is backed up nicely, though, by the Braves. Backed up nicely by the Braves over there by Sammy B. Sammy B. Sam Bennett. Very instrumental in helping Canandaigua football go undefeated and win their second straight Class A championship. All right, ball up top now with Grant. Sidestep, nice dodge. Draws the double, lets it go. Off the upright on the left-hand side. And the rebound was picked up by Liam McGuire. And McGuire's going to go back to D'Angelo. And D'Angelo is going to get his uh, pocket picked. Eric Platten on the steal. Here comes the long pole. He's going to let it go. And it goes wide left. And it was backed up nicely by D'Angelo. D'Angelo, it was a foot race to get there between him and... Boy, those numbers are uh, number 12. That is uh, P.J. Rude. P.J. Rude with the uh, one minute. I believe that was a slash. That, was that a slash, Greg, that he got busted for earlier? Yep. So now the ride by Canandaigua kind of giving Brighton fits here. And they do not clear it cleanly. And it's right here on the Canandaigua end. And it is going to be picked up by Nemo. Jackson Neiman, he draws a double team. He's going to get it up here to Jackson Grant. And looks like we're going to have a timeout. So we do have a stoppage in play with 6.45 left to play in the first half. So, all right, we're back coming out of that timeout, fans. Let me set the table for you. 6.35 left to play. We're coming at you live from Braves Field. 6.36, always do your best to be your best. Left to play here in the first half. Canada Day, we're leading the Brighton Bruins 4-0. to zero. So Canandaigua keeping that bagel up on the board uh, uh, for Brighton. So Canandaigua with the ball at the 30 over here with uh, Dominic Camella. Now Greg Herbst, uh, uh, he's he's not going to be doing color commentary for me anymore because Nick, his son, is going to be going to Brockport to play football. Right hand laser gets knocked down. Right hand laser by... Uh, uh, I believe that's Spin Blazak who put that down. Now they're going to swing it back over, and Blazak is going to pick it up. Very fortunate that Canandaigua did not get their pocket picked there. 5.55 left to play. But uh, uh, Greg Herbst uh, described, because I said that uh, that dude is tough. That dude is all muscle. And, and, and my boy Herbie goes, his muscles have muscles. 
So, uh, speaking of muscles, Cam Tallman was camped out at the elbow there. Now they've got uh, Bellis out in front. So, no shot clock. Canandaigua has plenty of time to do whatever they want here with 525 left to play. Ball at X. Now going to come up to the GLE. Speaking of GLE, Devin Andrews, the best GLE player that I've ever seen at the high school level uh, with LeMoyne. They have uh, their tournament still going. So, LeMoyne, I think they're ranked number one, aren't they? If they're not one, they're number two. They might be number two. But five minutes left to play here. Ball up top. Ball up top. Who was that? Uh, that's Elliot Morgan. 450. Man, it's good. listen, it's going to take a while to get used to those numbers. Here's a shot, and I'm pretty sure D'Angelo might have got a piece of that. Might have got a piece of that. Not sure, but ball does stay with the Braves because, as I said, the team that's closest to the ball when it goes out of bounds does get possession. Here's Bellis, left-hander. Oh, and the backhand shot by Cam Tallman is good. The behind the back is good. I can't call that an around the world, but I can call that a behind the back. Bellis, Tallman, 435, Canandaigua with 5 to nothing. Great job. Great feed. Great feed by Bellis. Nice feed by Tallman, or, or by Bellis. And that's going to be Tallman's second. So Tallman has his second from Bellis. So Bellis, when he scored, he got a feed from Tallman. So Tallman returned the favor. and and uh, Or I should say Bellis returned the favor. 4.35 left to play here in the first half, and Canandaigua leading 5 to nothing. This Canandaigua defense just very stout right now. Very stout, looking good. At the grind, at the X, grinding it out. McCroby, Tarango, loose. Wings are in, and they are going to call the uh, violation against Canandaigua and award the ball to Brighton with 4.20 left to go here in the first half. Tell you what, that first quarter sizzled. It went by very quickly. Actually, this second this second quarter, it's it doesn't seem to have gone by as quickly as the first did, but it's definitely motoring. M -m 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 motoring. All right, ball up top here at the 30. Here's Tarango. He sends it over to McGuire. McGuire, one-on-one -on -one against Grant. They try to feed it down to T.J. Carl, and it's going to go by Carl. He can't handle it. That pass was a little too hot to handle from McGuire. All right, so long pole over on the far side. Feeds it up top. Is that Camella coming down on the left-hand side? Thomas Passawi with the defense. And again, if I get that name wrong, that's how the assistant coach told me how to say it. Who is that assistant coach? I'm going to throw him under the bus. Coach Lasham told me how to say it. So if it's wrong, don't blame me. Blame Coach Lasham. I look out and I see the girls lacrosse team over here grouped together. Here is a right-hand runner by Grant, and it's good. Jackson Grant with the right-hand runner from the right alley makes it good. 3.06 left to play in the first. Canandaigua takes a three, or six to nothing lead. Jackson Grant. Jackson Grant is going to knock that one down. That is his third of the season unassisted. 3.06, six to nothing. Canandaigua just imposing their will here. Like I said, I thought it was 704 days. Coach York says it's 714, and I'll tell you what. I'm going to listen to him before I listen to myself. That's not going to stop me from talking, but I'm just saying. My dad used to say, Greg, that I talk a lot, never say anything. Now here I am making a living talking. Tarango, he gets the, uh, the face off, but then he comes in, and he draws a ton of attention. And he is going to go into the... Uh, Canandaigua Tribe, and just before he is uh, going to lose possession, nice, nice time out there by Coach Benedict. This multi-use facility has stood up to a lot of use, a lot of use in just the four or five years. Five years we agreed upon, right? Five, five seasons of use, soccer, 
lacrosse, boys and girls, football. FLCC comes here uh, every now and then and, and uses it for lacrosse or soccer. Tarango comes down. Oh, they're going to call the trip. They're going to call the trip against Canandaigua. He went down. He's he's up limping a little bit, though, on the left leg, but he's a tough kid. He's a tough kid, the senior. He'll be okay, man. He'll shake it off, and Canandaigua is going to give Brighton an emo opportunity here and with 236 left to play, and it's going to go against Nemo. It goes against Jackson Neiman. Jackson Neiman, the uh, senior, the son of Dave Neiman, former varsity coach here, he used to coach at Aquinas. He's been around. His pedigree is uh, is quite extensive as well. He's now an assistant coach for football. Oh, and Tarango. They're not Tarango. That was uh, Jet Richardson, the sophomore, right there on the elbow. Oh, and Brighton is going to do their best to throw the ball away, and it is. It does go out, and it will go to Canandaigua. So Canandaigua, Brady Camella over here on the long pole, younger brother of uh, Dom Camella, taller of the two. Oh, he fights through the Malachi Crunch. Great job by P.J. Rude to fight through the Malachi Crunch and give Canandaigua with 15 seconds left to go, being a man down, an opportunity to go into the locker room and add to their 6 to nothing lead with a buck 40 left to play. So Camella, time has run out. We're going to be back to even Steven. Camella, GLE, goes over to Bellis at the X. Bellis swings it up top on the left alley. Yep, over there on the far side, man. I got to pull these out. That's Sammy B. Sammy B. What? I think. I think he had. What do you have? Five goals against Palmac in that one season opener a couple seasons ago. But uh, trying to pass it. Uh, trying to pass it down. I don't know if he was trying to go to Camella or not. But the long pull of Brighton is going to pick it up, and that is going to be uh, James Biachi, the senior. Now they come over to the near side over here to uh, to Welker, the freshman. Now they feed it up in the middle on the run. Nice job to get it up. But a great trail check by Neiman. Great trail check there by Neiman. And a trail check, fans, is just a check from behind. You know what I'm saying? They're trailing the ball. And uh, Sammy B gets it, and it looks like Coach York is going to call a timeout. So Coach York uses one. He burns one, stops the clock at 42 point eight troublemakers when we were kids but uh we were ball over here on the near side man that was a trip eric platten the yale product gonna go play with the bulldogs that's crazy gonna go to yale that's that's major that's major man so final 25 seconds canada will leading six to nothing doing their best to keep that bagel on the board at the break we'll call it the bagel break or the break bagel. How's that? The break bagel. Love it. Man, I'm silly. Ten seconds. Canandaigua going to try to get a shot off. Here comes Sammy B. Let's it go. Goes wide right. And rebound is going to come all the way out to midfield where Jackson Grant is going to pick it up. And the whistle blows with nine-tenths of a second. And they're going to award the ball to the Barons. Or I, oh, there I did it. I said it. The Bruins. But time is going to expire. End of the first half with <coughs> Canada will leading six to nothing. And we are just about set to go. Again, the breeze coming out of the northwest. Nothing too strong. Nothing too strong. Unlike yesterday, man, it was very, very windy up here yesterday. So got to give Jim Simmons, Randy Boylan, and the rest of the athletic department, you know, a big shout out. So one thing you see here is the at least at college look at Tarango he's going to pick up the first face off he almost eats a trail check and oh nice shot from the left hand alley off the feed off of the face off win I believe that was number 19 I believe that was TJ Carl TJ Carl was going to get rid of that bagel right off the face off just eight seconds Yep, T.J. Carl. T.J. Carl with an assist with the feed from uh, Tarango is going to come at 11.52 and make it 6-1. to 
That's just that is how important the faceoff is. And Tarango is going to win a second one straight. This time going up against uh, David Lytle. So they put Lytle in there to try and uh, you know make, give an answer for Tarango on the faceoff. Just a great job by Tarango to come right down Main Street, right, right between the hash marks. Feed off to the left wing over to uh, T.J. Carl, and T.J. Carl knocks down his fourth. So he's got four and one for five. Four goals, one assist, five points. Let's see if Brighton trying to get that second one in a row. They feed it down to the GLE, and the turnaround is no good, and it looks like Fayola might have got a piece of that. T.J. Carl shooting over the shoulder from the right-hand side hash marks. Backed up nicely by Brighton. Now let's see what Brighton does here. They get it up top, up to McGuire. And McGuire gets it checked out of his stick by Neiman. And Neiman picks it up. And then Neiman eats an elbow and loses the ball from Dan Johnson. And now the ball is back with Brighton. So Canada were unable to make anything happen here. But it did eat a lot of time off the clock. Here's a right-hand runner, and he telegraphed that. Telegraph that did Dan Johnson sent out an email and the clearing pass is knocked down. The clearing pass is going to be picked up by Johnson. Johnson over to McGuire. So Canandaigua coming out of the locker room a little cold, a little cold, giving up a goal, unable to clear. And it looks like they are going to award the ball to uh, Canandaigua. They award the ball to Canandaigua. Unable to uh, progress for Brighton. So Bellis is going to get it to the X to Tallman. Tallman over here to Bennett. Bennett swings it right back up top, up to Camella. Camella backs up along the 40. He's going to go one-on-one -on -one against McGuire. Angles over. Now down along the hash marks. McGuire, very physical, but it's okay. Bellis over to Tallman. Tallman over here to Jackson Grant, near side. Now right down the middle with Elliot Morgan. Morgan tried to feed Camella but gets it checked. Everybody on the carpet and it's going to come up with Blayton. They outlet to McGuire. McGuire going up the left-hand side along the numbers. Down to Carl. 920 left to play in the third. They get it up top over here along the oh and he splits the double and he's going to let the left hander go and it's going to get past Fayola. Olin Stanett is going to get number four on the season in Brighton. It's going to get two in a row to start the second half here with 9.09 left to play. It's now 6-2. to two. That, uh, that kind of changes the landscape. Olin Stanett Knocks it down. Gets his fourth of the season. He's now got four and three for seven. And again, in case you don't know what I'm talking about, four goals. First number's goals. Second number's assist. Third number is total points. 9.09. Tarango doing his thing. 80% at the faceoff coming into today. And this time, they're going to call the violation against Tarango. And they are going to award the ball to Luke McCroby and Canandaigua. So McCroby right at the 40, coming down the numbers, goes up against Tarango, feeds Bellis. Bellis, ambidextrous, lefty and righty. Predominantly, predominantly lefty. I'm ambidextrous as well. I make the same mistakes with my left hand that I make with the right hand. <laughs> Here's Cody Ike, the big dude, big red, spin. And they're going to call him for warding off. They're going to say he warded off, which basically is elbowing, pushing off with the elbow to try and get the defender off of you. So the ball does go to Brighton, trailing 6-2. to two. And Tarango with it over on – oh, that's not Tarango, I don't think. Yeah, it was Tarango, so I was right. <laughs> I was correct. I, I can't say I was right because I, I don't think I'm ever right. I was correct. All right, that was a shot on myself. I believe that's Diana Hart down there taking pictures, walking the uh, stalk in the sidelines. Eight minutes left to play here in the third. 
Almost knocked down by Neiman, but they get it up to McGuire. He tries to put the, the spin move on. He draws the uh, short stick. Now they feed it down to the GLE to stand it way on the outside. Now they get it over to the far side to TJ Carl with one thus far here today. Canandaigua defense doing a great job. 7.30 left to play. McGuire, hash marks, near side, 20, turned away. Goes over to the middle, can't handle it. Cal Oberst can't handle it and it's picked up by Canandaigua. Long pull, Nemo, backhand pass to Sammy B at the 20. Nemo comes in, sets the screen for Sammy B, stays down here. 7.05 left to play in the third. Good job, Nemo. Ball on the right alley now, over along the right hash marks. Braves bring it down, GLE, looking to pass it over here to Sammy B. Sammy B behind goal, GLE, spin move. Good defense, can't get a look, lets it go, turned away by D'Angelo. Comes out, Camella can't pick it up, Brighton can't pick it up, still loose, still loose. Canada finally picks it up, looks like it's Camella. Camella's going to bring it down over here to the left alley along the 20-yard line and settle everybody down. They get it back up to Jackson Grant. He's at the 35 along the left hash marks. Puts the move on McGuire. Now goes over right hash marks. Let's the right-handed runner go. Uh, the bouncer is going to go wide left, and it will be backed up nicely by uh, Sammy B of Canandaigua. Works off the screen of Bellis. Bellis taking advantage, comes around. Oh, ball deflected, and it's going to be picked up on the run by Oberst, the junior. Oberst on the run, right down Main Street, feeds the left wing. They go to the GLE, loose ball. Great, great presence of mind to see the wing open. Man, what a pass out here to Dom Camella. The clear, cleared very successfully by Canandaigua inside the box right at the corner. Camella over to Blazak. Blazak over to Elliot Morgan. Spin Blazak. Stand out skier here for Canandaigua. Two time sectional champion. 520. Oh, that's right. You did the JV girls game last. Uh, yeah. Because I'm like, wait. I was going to talk about that, and then I'm like, wait, I just did. 505. Yeah, I just, I think it's interesting, man. That Blazak family spinning buoy. Yeah, skier of the year, too. Yeah, skier of the year as well. Final five minutes here in the third quarter. Ball up top with Elliot Morgan. Elliot Morgan, again, one of the instrumental players in that sectional championship. Here's Sammy B. He tried to let it go. Gets the loose ball after losing it. Picks it up. Let's the right hander go from 10 yards away and knocks it down. And Sammy B is in the books. He's got his first goal of the season. Sammy B at 444 makes it Canandaigua with 7 to 2. So 7 to 2, 444 left to play here in the third. Stops the run for Brighton at 2. Sammy B unassisted. Sammy B was uh, looking to let it go along the hash marks on the left-hand side from 10 yards out. The goal is set up at the 10. And now in the girls' game, it's set up right at the goal line. But here in the boys' game, it's set up at the 10. And Sammy B, here is the violation, and the ball will go to Canada on the faceoff. Sammy B was going to let it go, and I don't know if he had it checked out of his stick or if he just, you know, flubbed it and dropped it. As soon as he uh, lost it, he picked it back up and then let it go from 10 yards out right down Main Street, right in between the hash marks, and we're at 7-2 with 4.20 left to play here in the third. And here comes Big Red. Big Red making his way in over there on the right-hand side. And he is going to, he's matched up against, who's he matched up against? Definitely, definitely a big size differential over there. I believe that's Dan Johnson. I could be wrong. Ball over here with, uh, with the dominator. Here's Sammy B, and he lets it fly, and it gets turned away. I don't, I don't think that hit an upright. It got turned away. 
save. Yeah, I believe that was uh, I believe that was D'Angelo with a nice save there. The freshman, just a freshman. Here comes Camella. He makes room and he finds the upper side just under the crossbar. So Dom Camella with 342 left to play here in the third is going to put in another one. That's, I believe, his second. So Canandaigua with two in a row now after giving up two straight to Brighton just about just about a minute even since the Sammy B goal is going to make it 8-2 to two with 342 left to play. Game time 604. I I'm okay with these five o'clock starts. I think I think I could I think I could be okay with that because it gives gives me plenty of time to get home and watch some racing on floor racing or dirt vision. I missed a great race last night, but I watched a great game. Canandaigua was just so dominant. Abby Herod was just dominant at the draw. And McKenna Davis, the Pittsburgh transfer, uh, her and her sister Hannah wanted to come over here and play. Tarango is going to finally scoop it up. Man, they had to grind that one out. They had to grind that one out. And Tarango is going to come away with it for Brighton. Nice check. Nice check over on the far side. Man, it's getting physical. It's getting physical now, folks. Let's see. I got to get the Binox. They are over on the farthest away part of the field. Who is that? Uh, who's that long pole, man? That long pole, number eight, is uh, Teddy Lenz, a senior. Teddy Lenz. He's, he's a big dude. He's yeah, he skis. Man, they're missing him on the basketball court. No question about that. That dude is tall. I'm gonna put him at what six five. Yeah, he is. He's he's a bagging. So they got the ball over here. Does Brighton with Owen Stanett scored? I believe scored the last goal for the uh, for the Bruins. Yes, he did. Carl and then Stanett, 235, ball loose. Oh, man, they are knocking each other around. Nemo gets in there, and he puts a nice hit on somebody. Ball is loose and comes down to Fayola. Uh-oh, uh lost the ball. Oh, what a save, what a save by Fayola. And another one by Fayola. Man, the defender lost the ball. Eric Platten lost the ball. And Brighton with two great in-your-face chances. And Fayola stones both of them with 2.05 left to play. Fayola got a, a stick on that second one, right? Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Down here with Stan at GLE out by the numbers. And the GLE is just goal line extended, fans. That's just a goal that extends out from the uprights on the sides of the goal. Boy, I'll tell you, you can see Fayola is Amped. He is definitely amped up right now. Two fantastic saves to keep that number four Brighton at two. 607 is game time. 135 left to play. They feed it up and they rake it. Uh, both Brighton players rake it. Uh, PJ Rude was unable to come up with it, so Brighton does retain possession. They get it down here to the GLE to TG or TJ Carl. He's looking for another one. He's got one of Brighton's two. 115 left to play. CA, eight and two. Oh, and we've got a yard sale. A check over there, and TJ Carl loses his stick for Brighton. And the ball comes up with Canada. When Nemo comes down, Sammy B, man, that dude gets cranked. He cranks, man. Sammy B cranks. He doesn't just quick shoot. He, he throws the hands. Loose ball, and we've got a whistle. Man, that dude cranks. If you give Sammy B the room to throw the hands, to step down and then throw the hands, he gonna he gonna do it, so what do we have here, a couple substitutions for Brighton oh we got somebody with the old school all black cleats I gotta see who that is Yep, all black high tops. That's uh, number four. I got to give him a shout. Oh, we've seen him, Thomas Passaway. Yeah, so the officials gathered to talk, which is a great opportunity for me to once again thank uh, the booster sponsors here. We'll start with ADS Masonry, UDN Incorporated. Sammy B looks like he'll have the restart over here by the sideline at the 25. Specialty Solutions Southeast, Sager Marie. Arena, Scott Green, Remax Realty Properties, Rob Meenan, Paris Kerwin Insurance, 
for recycling and for is f-o-r-e as they feed it up and now get it back over to the middle to spinnaker blazak and they feed it over to jackson grant over on the uh far side and brian Root orthodontics thank you all very much for stepping up and making it possible for us to broadcast simulcast and have a great time here final 30 seconds in the third canada will leading eight to two Looking to add. Here is Sammy B. Comes up to the GLE. Puts a spin move on. Loses the ball. Going to be kicked around. Pinballed around. Tallman in there trying to get it. Bellis comes in to try to get it. Man, they are beating on each other. Tallman. That is not a dude. I want Cam Tallman on my side in a bar fight. That's all I have to tell you. Nine seconds. And still loose right around the 20. Nobody wants it. Who wants it? Who wants it the most? Man, we've got a... Uh, we got a little scrum going on, and time is going to run out. Time is going to run out on the third quarter. Man, that was a nice little series right there. So game time is 6.09, and we're at the end of the third quarter. So there you have it, 8-2, to two, Canandaigua leading over. I'm sorry, Mark. Mark's, Mark's looking at me like I can't. I hate you. I can't. Be, I, I don't know. I don't, I'll never let it happen again, Mark, I promise. I'll never let it happen again. But, uh, yeah, here we go. Change ends. Face-off one by uh, Tarango and the Bright. Thank you, sir. I love you, man. So I just uh, I can't uh, I can't stress enough how Tarango is, is, is helping Brighton win the face-off battle. But they're trailing 8-2. to two. So, again, that tells me the Canandaigua defense is forcing turnovers. And they're, you know, keeping them. Uh, look at that right there. McGuire, he goes to pass it up top. And it just gets away from him and goes out of bounds. So, the Brighton Bruins not doing anything to help themselves by any stretch of the imagination. 11-20 left to play here in the final frame. And anybody who knows me knows that I've said before, I used to hate it when announcers would use that cliche, the final frame, but now I use it myself regularly. So I'm, try I'm trying to plug in. There we go. Trying to plug in with... Uh, with 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 Marky's uh, charger here, but uh, yeah, I'll never let it happen again. I promise. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw. I don't know if it's charging or not. I'm gonna throw a couple chargers in. Yep, it's charging. Thanks, Marky. I made it down to thirty. We made it down to 30 before I stopped. Throw a couple of those. Here's a shot by Cannon Dagwell, but backed up nicely by Cam Tallman. Now, I coached Cam Tallman. He's one of several players. Uh, the, the Camella brothers, I coached both uh, Brady and Dom Camella, Nick Herbst, and uh, Cam Tallman in basketball way back in like second or third grade. Can't remember which one. And I remember one game where there was about 15 seconds left. And, uh, oh, here's a shot from the right-hand side. Sammy B. Knocks one down at 10.27 left to play. And I believe that is Sammy B's uh, second. Boy, why is it so quiet? It got so quiet here. 10.27 to make it 9-2. To, to make it 9-2. to And that is... Uh, Sammy B's second goal on the season. But I was coaching these guys, and we were trailing by one to a Red Jacket team. And, I, and, and I'm from Red Jacket, and, and I had originally from Canada, what grew up on uh, Wood Street up from uh, Sam's. You ever go to Sam's, Greg? Come on now. Come on now. You, you, you know the uh, white stucco house? You know the white stucco house up uh, by Gorm that had all the vines on the outside of it, the ivy? That was my house. That was, that's where I, a cr kitty corner from the octagon. We used to play in the octagon house. But uh, here comes... Here comes Canandaigua in transition after forcing another turnover. Nice pass over to, I believe, Blazak. But here is Cam Tallman, who I told Cam, I said, listen, go to the basket. Don't pass, don't look, go to the basket. He did, we won just as time ran out. It was awesome. 9.50 left to play. He's an athlete. He's an athlete. He's stocky. He, he's not the most fleet of foot person, but when you need some speed from him, he will give it to you, no doubt. Here's Tallman. At the X. He's going to come up to the GL8. Letting everybody set up. Here comes Camella. 
And as I said, most of these guys played together on the uh, football team. Here's Blazek, goes over to Bellis. Bellis back up top, 9.25 left to play. Feed inside, right hand go. I think that hit off the upright. I'm pretty sure. I think that hit off either the upright or the crossbar, one or the other, and uh, goes out of bounds, and Canada will, will retain possession. Woo, Elliot Morgan swings it over. Camella, and now they're going to wheel it around the outside. Now, I, I, if I recall, I think Ed Mulhern, legendary coach, uh, led Canandaigua to a state title in 2009, 09, I believe, and and that's when they had the uh, that's when they had the uh, what, what what was the sneaker that that uh, sponsored the uh, what was that New Balance New Balance yeah New Balance and they had that whole season thing and all that I I understand he's over there on the sidelines over there with Coach York right now 8:45 left to play. Eddie Mulhern, man, he played uh, played with my brother back in the uh, mid '70s. Played lacrosse, defensive player. Pass out in front, man. That's always an iffy proposition there to pass it out in the middle. Comes away with the Barons, and great ride, and they're unable to clear it. Morgan, he can't pick it up, and got a little scrum going on for it right there at midfield in the circle. Everybody trying to pick it up. Still hasn't been picked up. Where is it? Brighton finally comes away with it. Well, watch the push in the back. Don't push in the back, Eric. And great save by Fiola, but the rebound comes all the way out. Oh, we're going to have a, a, a push. We're going to have some extracurricular activity after the fact. Great save by Fiola. Problem is, long rebound. Rebound was picked up and then knocked down, so Brighton puts one in at 8.07. Uh, who who got that, Greg? Twenty six. That was uh, Jet Richardson. That'll be his second on the season. So the Jet knocks one down. His third, and then we'll see what happens. There was a flag afterwards. So Canandaigua is going to go a man down. A little bit of extracurricular activity after the sh after the shot after the goal. A little bit of uh, some push action. You know, put uh, Richardson on the turf. Let's see who that's going to go against. It's going to go against Teddy Lenz. Big Teddy, the senior, is going to sit out for a minute. So an emo opportunity here for the... Is that a falcon? Dude, that's a falcon. Or is that an eagle? You see it on the on the light over there? I, swear, I think that's a falcon. I do. I think that... that What's that? I think that's a falcon on top of uh, one of the lights just hanging out. <laughs> what a view. I always I always would have loved to have been a bird watching the races. But anyway, emo opportunity here for Brighton, trailing 9-3. to three. See if they can knock down a second one here, uh, being a man up. McGuire gets it down to the left side, and they get it back to McGuire. Swings it over to the middle at the top with Oberst on the reset. Now GLE. And another errant pass, and we've seen plenty of those. Ball management has been a major issue for the Benedict-coached Brighton Bruins. Nice job on the uh, on the check by Neiman, and then he comes up, and Oberst tries to push him around. Puck is, or Puck, yeah, I can't believe I said Puck. Oh, and a nice job there to try to get it down to Tallman. And that brings D'Angelo. Sammy B came away with the ball after that whole mess. And now Canandaigua's going to pick it up on the turnover, coming back the other way. And now they're going to turn it over. So just trading turnovers here right now. Man, I love that Falcon. I'm pretty sure that is. Here is a great save by Fayola on that right-handed laser. But the ball is going to come out. And Brighton is going to knock it back down. So that is that is one of the problems with making the stick save. When you make the save with the hands or the stick itself, the ball is going to rebound. you got to use the head of the stick. That's why it's got that deep pocket. All right, so not. Uh, I'm pretty sure he said Liam McGuire, and that's going to be McGuire's second of the season. And Brighton now has two in a row. So... McGuire makes it two in a row, and with 6.38 left to play, it's now 9-4. to four. And 9-4 to four looks a heck of a lot different than 8-2 to two and 9-2. to two. 6.38 left to play. Back at the X, 
grinding it out, and it is going to come up with Tarango. Tarango in from the wing this time. Comes right down Main Street, passes left wing to Carl. Carl out in front. And tried to get the shot off. No good. And ball is going to end up with Fayola. He's come up with some huge saves here today. Loose ball. A little bit of a push from behind. Let's him play on. Ball in the stick of Bellis. Matt Bellis. As I said, younger brother of Mark. What 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 does uh, Devin call him? Dad, right? Didn't he yeah. call? Yep, called Mark Bellis dad. So uh, probably uh, Ike back behind X, and X is just a spot behind the uh, goal. So C Cody Ike set back up there, big red. 5:45 left to play. Nine to four. Here comes Spin Blazak. Let's it go. And a nice save there by D'Angelo, and the rebound is going to come out and be picked up by the long pole of the Bruins. Here we go on the run. And nice, jo nice job there by Ben Vitale, the junior, to bring it down. And another well-used timeout there by Coach Benedict because the loose ball was kind of going around. And you call that timeout so you don't lose possession. Canada, well, the ladies uh, won the sectionals last year. They've won two out of the last three. Canada will losing to Victor in a heartbreaker at St. John Fisher College last season. With just under seven minutes left to go, Canada will lead six to four. Ended up losing seven to six. Gave up three straight with the winning goal coming with just 30 seconds left to play. Feed out in front, no good. Loose ball. Picked up by Elliot Morgan. He's off to the races. He's going to come right down Main Street. Angle over towards the right hash marks. Put the brakes on right around the 30. Dump it down here to Bellis. Swing it down to Tallman at the X behind. Tallman over to the far side. Now right in front of Canandaigua. Oh, that was weird. That was weird. <laughs> Listening to myself. That was weird. 4.25 left to play here in the final frame. Cannon Day will leading 9-4. to four, Trying to improve to 2 to nothing. Here comes Big Red. He's gingerific. Man, you are not going to change that dude's direction. Plain and simple. You're better off just checking the heck out of him and trying to get the ball out of his stick. Because you're not going to, you aren't going to redirect him. No question. He's just got to kind of a, a, avoid that ward situation. He got called for it once earlier. Here's Matt Bellis at the 20 on the right alley. Angles down. Goes right-handed. They kick it out to Tallman. Back out in front to Ike, and he lets the right-hander go. And it's going to clear and go all the way to the fence. And Canada does back it up nicely, so they will retain possession. With a 9-4 to four lead with 3.40 left to play. Camella, left alley, swings it over to Tallman. Tallman, those two very formidable running backs. Both seniors here at Canandaigua. Jackson Grant, he got in on the action. He caught a couple touchdown passes during the season. Brian Boldrin, what a maturation process he has gone through. Here's Jackson Grant, left alley, Ike. Up top, right in the middle. Oh, he skies that over Cam Tallman's head. Sent that air mail. And Cam Tallman, not the tallest dude out there, but he needed every inch that he has, including probably about another foot. Definitely would have needed to climb the ladder a few rungs. D'Angelo with the pass is going to be picked off by Neiman. Nemo over here to Jackson Grant. Jack springs right down, lets the left-hander go. I believe that was deflected by James Biachi, the senior defender. 247 left to play. Backed up nicely by Canandaigua, though. We've got a couple guys back in the Canandaigua end zone on the southern end. Boy, what a difference from the last time these guys played at Brighton. Where, as I said, that was a 15-5 win. Now, if you, if you do recall, I've got, I've got to throw it out there that they did not have Erlocker and Verheil to start the game. And here is a runner by Sammy B. Sammy B knocks down and gets the hat trick at 2.36 left to play. So ends the run. Sammy B has scored uh, twice here. 
Sammy B twice in the fourth. This one with 236 left to play to make it 10 to 4. So Canada Day went double digits. So for whatever reason, I'm not going to get into the reasoning why, uh, you know, Joey and, and Virhal did not start the play the first half of that game. That's kind of, you know, that's anyway. <laughs> but they didn't have the face-off or the defensive services of either one of those individuals. So a lot of people are, are you know, including myself, are going to say, hey, that's no excuse. you got to go next man up. I'm just saying. I'm just saying the landscape of that game might have been a little different. But uh, Joey Erlocker, he went on to play. He, he plays now for St. John Fisher College, as does the Machete, uh, Mike Cicchetti, uh Brandon Moore, Joe Post. Who am I missing? Panera, that's right, Roger Panera, and he's got that old mutton chop, uh, that mutton chop facial hair. 2.15 left to play here now, and a nice takeaway by Canandaigua Brighton, unable to make anything happen, but then Canandaigua does the best they can to throw it away, and a nice scoop pass by Ben Vitale. Really nice scoop pass by Vitale to get it up to Jet Richardson, who has one of the Brighton four goals. A buck 55 left to play. So unless Brighton catches uh, lightning in a bottle and Tracy McGrady comes out and scores, what, six straight goals in a buck 45, they're going to fall to 0-2. Oh, nice job out there defensively by Nick Herbst. Nicky Herbst in the game. He's a good big-sized dude. And here comes Canada Day on the breakaway. And we've got a new goalie, Paul Rungi, in goal for uh, Brighton. Canandaigua comes up empty-handed on that breakaway. And just Brighton has had a lot of trouble on the clear. That has definitely been a weakness here for the Bruins this entire game. So Canandaigua will improve to 2 and O. Oh. Up next, Corning. So they're going to hit the road. Going to go to Corning. That is that is one of the things that has changed, no doubt, because Section Five basically said you got to play teams within your own division. You got to play teams. You know, we don't want you traveling. We don't want you going too far. We don't want. We want to uh, restrict the possibility of of moving. You know, the virus that shall not be named, uh, moving that around. <laughs> So that'll be interesting. That game will not be on Chosen Spot Radio. No doubt about that. Because I'll be doing the Canandaigua Ladies versus the Monarchs of Mercy. 25 seconds left to play. So now we're going to have to ball is just kind of being batted around out in front. Pinballed around. Now it was kicked away. 15 left to play, and it's going to be scooped up by Canandaigua. Scooped up by Sammy B. And there you have it, fans. Final five seconds of play. Canandaigua victorious 10-4 to four in their first home game in almost two years.